What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to install, set up and connect to an open SSH server inside of the Windows subsystem for Linux. So let us get right into it. All right, so for this video, I'm going to assume that you already have the Windows subsystem for Linux installed and configured. So we're not going to cover the installation process of the system in and of itself. We're going to focus on the SSH server, the installation, the configuration and the connection in today's video. However, if you do need help with the installation, I do have a tutorial on my channel as well on how to uh, install the Windows subsystem for Linux in the first place. So you might want to check that out if you need some help there. Uh, besides that, it might be important to mention that I'm working on the version two here. So on the WSL version two, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference. I'm not sure if the process is not exactly the same for Windows subsystem for Linux version one. Uh, however, if you encounter some difficulties and you don't know why, because you did everything the same way and it happens that you're using version one, maybe you should switch to version two to make this tutorial work, or you have to watch another tutorial that is compatible with version one. So having said that, we're going to start by opening up the Windows subsystem for Linux terminal. So I'm going to use it inside of Windows terminal and I'm going to open up my Ubuntu um, command line here. And the first thing we want to do is we want to install the open SSH server. So we're going to say sudo apt install open SSH dash server. We're going to pass when I enter our um, our root password. And in my case, this is already installed, so it doesn't install anything new here. Um, and once you have that, what you want to do is you want to generate an SSH key. So we want to say SSH dash key gen dash capital A, and then you want to start the SSH service. So you want to say sudo service SSH start, and then you can see here starting open BSD secure shell server. This means that the SSH service is now running. You also need to permit the service in the firewall. So you want to say sudo uh, UFW allow SSH. So you change the rule, you add an existing rule in this case, because I already have it. In your case, it is going to create a new rule, which is going to allow SSH connections to that Windows uh, subsystem here. What you need to do now on Windows, uh, what we're going to do here in this video is we're going to connect from the Windows system to the SSH server locally. So we're going to use the Windows system, the base system that I'm recording on right now, to connect to the Windows subsystem for Linux. But this also works if you're connecting from a different computer, uh, whatever you're doing from from another computer in the LAN, um, if you have a port, um, port rule that allows um, connections from the internet, you can also do it from there. But on the system that is connecting to the SSH server, you need to do the following things, you need to open up a command line. In this case, I'm going to just open the simple CMD command line here, I'm going to say here as well, SSH dash a uh, dash key gen dash T R S a so this is going to generate a public private RSA key pair. Uh, I'm gonna say that the file is gonna be the default file actually, and I'm gonna overwrite the file that already exists. And I'm gonna choose a passphrase, I'm gonna call it now 12345 12345. And then we have this uh, SHA, this SHA-256 fingerprint, and then we have also uh, a random art image representing that uh, key that we generated. However, what we need to do now is we need to navigate to the directory that we see up here. So in my case, the user directory uh, of my user and then to the .ssh directory. And here we have uh, a file called ID underscore RSA dot pup. So we can actually see that we have this ID RSA dot pup uh, file here. And what we want to do with that file is we want to copy it somewhere, uh, for example, on the desktop. So I'm going to say, uh, copy ID RSA dot pup. I'm going to say I'm going to copy this to users flurry desktop. Like this, there you go, here's now the file. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go again into the Windows subsystem for Linux, we're going to copy that file from the desktop here. So if you don't know how to navigate to the desktop, you need to go to mount C and then you're basically on your Windows system. So you go to slash MNT slash C and then you're basically in your Windows system. So you go users, your username and then desktop. Um, and once you're there, what you can do is you say 
uh, copy the ID rsa.pub key. So this is the public key that we accept now and we want to copy it into the SSH folder of the Linux system, but we want to give it a different name. So what we want to do is want to say, okay, put this into um, our user directory dot SSH, but give it the name authorized underscore keys. So now if we go to dot SSH, in here, you have this authorized keys file. And this is the key that we have now inside of that file, this is the accepted SSH uh, key. So if we connect from this system now, to the SSH server on the Windows subsystem for Linux, it's going to be accepted, because it accepts this key here, this um, generated key. Um, now, the last thing that we need to do is we need to connect via SSH to that server. How do we do that? We need to know the IP address first. So what we do here is we type uh, if config. Now, chances are that if config is not going to work for you because you need to install something. If you don't, uh, if if config doesn't work out of the box, what you need to do is you need to say sudo apt install net dash tools. And this is going to then uh, allow you to use if config and with if config, you can see that on the Ethernet connection, I have the IP address uh, 172. 257863. This is your local IP address. So you can copy it. And then you can go into Windows and say SSH neural nine at this IP address. I accept the fingerprint. Uh, I enter the passphrase for the key 12345. And boom, I connected to my Windows subsystem for Linux from the command line on Windows. Um, so here I can do all sorts of things. Now, we can also see that this does no longer work if I change the file that has the authorized key. So I can close this here. And I can now say, okay, rename the file, move it from authorized keys to backup. And then do the same thing again. So open up a command line SSH neural nine at this, and it says permission denied. Same thing happens if I uh, move it back. So let's move the backup again to authorized underscore keys. Um, now it should work. Let's see if it works. One, two, three, four, five. Now it works again. Um, but if I, for example, do the same thing on Windows, so if I go to the dot SSH directory, and I remove these files here, so I Dell, or let's do we have a move? I'm not sure what the Windows command is, to be honest. Uh, RSA dot pub move it somewhere else test. Yeah, works. And also the RSA move it to test two. Now I don't have this um, as my key anymore. So we don't have the public key. And if I'm not mistaken, this should not work now anymore. Um, SSH neural nine at this, there you go permission denied because we don't have the respective public key. And of course, also if I generate the new public key. So if I say SSH uh, key gen dash T RSA, um, then of course, it won't work either, right. So I can just say enter no passphrase. There you go. Now I have a different key. Still, it won't work because this is now a different key, I would have to copy this key again, put it into the authorized keys, and then I would be able to connect. So this is how you set up open SSH on the Windows subsystem for Linux. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button, leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.